of the third lesson on algebraic fractions and today we're going to multiply of algebraic fractions but before we begin we're gonna get warmed up with remembering how to multiply with numerical fractions so we're going to work out the area of each of these three rectangles and match it with the correct one here so we have two thirds and the area of the rectangle is length times the width so the length times the width multiplied by nine tenths and we're going to do this by cross simplifying which means to identify a common factor of the numerator in one fraction and the denominator in the other so we can divide the three and the nine by three and the two and the ten by two so we can write this out again 2 divided by 2 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is also 1, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the area of this rectangle is 3 fifths, and this area matches with this one. Do you want to try the next two by pausing the video and resuming it when you're ready? Okay, so we have 5 twelfths multiplied by one and one third but I'm going to write one and one third at the top of a fraction which means I've got three thirds in one plus the one more third so in total I've got four thirds and I can cross simplify the 12 and the 4 by dividing both by 4 so that becomes 5 over 3 multiplied by 1 over 3 which is 5 over 9 so this one matches here and the last one 4 ninths multiplied by 3 quarters we can cross simplify here and here divide both by 4 and the 9 and the 3 both divide by 3 so we have 1 over 3 multiplied by 1 over 1 so the area of the yellow rectangle is one third and this matches here okay i hope you enjoyed that let's move on to the rest of the lesson so like i said we're going to multiply of algebraic fractions and we're going to use a very similar method to what we just did with the numerical questions we're going to multiply 1 over x by 4 over 3x and we're going to look for a common factor in the numerator of one and denominator of another in this case there is a one neither is there in the 4 and the x so this is simply 1 times 4 which is 4 over x times 3x 3x squared for question b we have 3x plus 6 over 5 multiplied by 3 over x plus 2. Now, before we go any further, you can see that we can factorize this expression here because 3 is a common factor of both the 3x and the 6. So we can put 3 on the outside and we have x and then 3 times 2 will make the 6. And we can write that over 5 multiplied by 3 over x plus 2. And you can see there's a common factor here of x plus 2 on both. So we can divide both of them by x plus 2, which means this will cancel and this will cancel. So we're left with 3 over 5 multiplied by 3 over 1, which is 9 over 5. For question C, we have n squared minus 1 over n plus 1 multiplied by 2 over n minus 2. And again, it's not obvious that there's a common factor, but we can expand this using the difference of two squares, or we could write it in its general form. So n squared with no n terms, negative 1. The two numbers that multiply to make negative 1 but add to make 0 are n plus 1 and n minus 1. 
over n plus 1 multiply by 2 over n minus 2. We can't cross simplify, but what we can do is simplify this fraction by dividing both by n plus 1. So these will cancel. So we're left with n minus 1 over 1 multiplied by 2 over n minus 2. So we have the numerator, which is 2 lots of n minus 1 over the denominator n minus 2. So do you want to try question D by pausing the video and then unpause it when you're ready? Okay, for question D, before we try and cross simplify, we're going to expand the numerator and the denominator and maybe they will share some common factors. So to expand y squared minus 16, we'll write it in its general form, y squared plus no y terms minus 16. Two numbers that multiply to make negative 16, but add to make the zero y are y plus 4 and y minus 4. Again, this is the difference of two squares. So we have y plus 4, lots of y minus 4. And we'll try and factorize this. So y squared plus 5y plus 6. Two numbers that multiply to make the 6, but add to make the 5. We have y plus 2 and y plus 3. So we'll put this back into our fraction. And now we'll look for a common factor by cross simplifying. And you can see the y plus 3 here will cancel with this one. And the y plus 4 here will cancel with the y plus 4 with the denominator in the other fraction. So this will go and this will go, and this will go and this will go. What I mean by that is they divide by each other to make 1. So we are left with y minus 4 over y plus 2. Okay, do you want to try these questions yourself by pausing the video and resuming it when you're ready? Okay, so let's go through question A. We have 2xy over 3x multiplied by 9xy squared over 6y. Before we cross simplify, we can simplify this fraction by dividing both by x. So we have 2y over 3. We can simplify this fraction by dividing the numerator and denominator by 3y. So the 9 divided by 3 is 3x. Three the y squared divided by y is y. 6y divided by 3y is 2. So we can cross simplify the 2 and the 2 and the 3 and the 3. So we have y over 1 multiplied by xy, which simplifies to make xy squared. So do you want to try question B by pausing the video and you can unpause it when you're ready? Okay, for question B, we have x squared plus x over 12x multiplied by 4x squared over x plus 1. Before we cross simplify, we can factorise this numerator. So we have x lots of x plus 1 over 12x multiplied by 4x squared over x plus 1. And you can see we can simplify the first fraction by dividing both by x. So we have x plus 1 over 12 multiplied by 4x squared over x plus 1. And we can cross simplify with the x plus 1. So this will leave you with 1 here and that would also be 1. And we can cross simplify with the 12 and the 4. We divide both by 4. So we have 3 and x squared because the 4 divided by 4 will make 1. So then we have 1 multiplied by x squared which is x squared and 3 times 1 which is 3. Okay, do you want to pause the video to try question C? Then we'll go through that when you're ready.
Okay, for question C. Before we can try and cross simplify, we're going to factorize um, the numerators and denominators where we can. So we can factorize w squared plus 4w plus 3. And this will make w plus 1 lots of w plus 3. We can factorize w squared plus 6w plus 8. This will become w plus 2 lots of w plus 4. And that is multiplied by w plus 4 over 2 lots of w plus 3. And you can see we can cross simplify here and here and here and here. So we're left with w plus 1 over 2 lots of w plus 2. Do you want to try question D? Um, all we're going to do is multiply this fraction by this fraction. We'll get left with a quadratic. Before we can cross simplify, we're going to factorize this numerator and this numerator. So two numbers that multiply to make negative 28, but add to make negative three. We've got x minus seven and x plus four over x plus three, multiplied by the difference of two squares. So x plus three and x minus three over x plus four. You can see the x plus four here will cancel with the x plus four in the other denominator and the x plus three in the denominator will cancel with the one in the other numerator. So we're left with x minus seven multiplied by x minus three. And to expand these out, we've got x squared minus three x minus the seven x plus the 21 x squared minus 10x by collecting these like terms. So a, the coefficient of x is negative 10. And b is the constant term. And this is positive 21. Okay, let's move on to our challenge question. Can you write five lots of x plus three multiplied by x minus four over x squared minus nine as a single fraction and simplify your final fraction fully? If you want to pause the video and try this question and then unpause it when you're ready. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize the x squared minus nine. So we've got the difference of two squares again, which is x plus three and x minus three. And you can see, and you can see the x plus three here and here will cancel. So we have five lots of x minus four over x minus three, which we can simplify to make five x minus 20 over x minus three. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you found that useful. The next lesson in this unit will be on dividing with algebraic fractions. Thank you again and take care.